It may not be the best strategy, but I think uh, it's the best that we can do right now. So uh, I suspect that we'll see more middle, middle colleges coming around. I don't know. Uh, we'll need to monitor their successfulness and their, their effectiveness. Uh, we'll be spending a lot of time focusing on that. But it, it's not something new for this country. I mean, middle colleges and early colleges have been around for a long time. Uh, we're just uh, kind of a Johnny-come-lately in Michigan, so it's a little bit new for us, and we're having to bring people up to speed. But it's an appropriate question, uh, but one that I don't think we're going to solve overnight and one that I think needs attending to, and I'm just not complacent to sit around and take what we're given. I think we've, we've got to be proactive, reach into the school district, partner with them, not point fingers, not waste our time about blame, but let's talk about what is the magnitude of the problem you have and how can we as higher education help you? At the end of the day, we want more educated citizens in Jackson County, do we not? With that education uh, of uh, individuals in our county, we know through the, uh, through the CC benefit study, we know we have reductions in crime. We have reductions in, in all kinds of health care related issues, uh, reductions in uh, uh, challenges our community faces, reductions in, in the teenage pregnancies. Uh, lots of benefits accrue to an educated populace. And uh, for me, I think it's, it's something that we can do. It's something that we can do. Somebody else had a question here. Yeah, Rose? Mm -hmm. uh, we've had dual enrollment for, uh, for a long time. Um, actually, we've seen some decline in dual enrollment, for those of you not aware. Essentially, what we have allowed is a college credit class um, uh, to be available for individuals at the high school level. They get a high school um, diploma credit for it, if you will, and a collegiate level um, transcript credit for it. Um, one of the challenges associated with the, um, the dual enrollment uh, is it's unstable uh, in terms of the number of schools that want to participate. That's the first issue. Uh, it's really left down to a superintendent's decision on whether they want to use the the uh, formula funding to pay for these individuals or not. So we have some schools that don't participate, some participate at a small level. Number two, the second problem is that Michigan State University, most of their colleges, not all, but most of the colleges at Michigan State University and definitely all of the University of Michigan say, unless the college credit class you're taking as a dual enrolled class in the high school does not satisfy a high school graduation requirement, then it counts for college. If the course that you're taking at high school counts for a high school diploma credit, it's not going to count for college. This says that's a crock. Uh, it says that this is a college credit class. It is our faculty, our textbook, our curriculum, where that is not always the case at the, um, at the dual enrollment uh, level. Um, let's see, there's one other component that's uh, escaping me. It's also uh, cohort-driven. Um, that's not always, it tends to be onesie twosies uh, with dual enrollment at the school level. Um, there are a couple of other points, Rose, I can get more information to you, but uh, that's basically it. Other questions? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, uh, frankly, our expansion uh, plan uh, has been something we've been working on for a number of years. It's uh, internally, uh, we call it the growth model. It's what I've talked with the board about. And essentially said that th we have um, a unique opportunity to be able to leverage a bad economy uh, to secure a greater level of participation by our community and students and recognition of the value of Jackson Community College. Uh, how have we done that? Well, uh, from a loan standpoint, Tom will tell you that the, obviously the interest rates are lower, so any construction is going to be at a higher value for us. We also have an econometric impact that as we take on construction during these difficult uh, economic years, we have the multiplier effect of that money moving around the community, and that's very, very helpful to uh, individuals who are currently unemployed. Um, I guess the best way that I can tell you is through the use of data. Uh, we have 28 community college districts in the state. Uh, we have some community colleges that are seeing growth that is flat, one or two or three percent. We're seeing numbers that are double digits, 20, 17, 15 percent. What's the key differentiator? I believe that we are becoming more and more relevant to the business and industry community and more and more relevant to parents and students alike 
by virtue of the new curriculum that we're introducing, by virtue of the um, uh, equipment that we're acquiring, and by the facilities. I think we're, we're kept alive and vibrant by what we're doing here. Now, uh, that having been said, I also know that uh, as we add more square footage, we need more folks to help clean the facilities. As we add more technology, we need more people to do the IT work. Uh, and we are uh, programming in our budget for uh, being able to accomplish that. We need more security. We're, we're contemplating as part of our budget to accommodate all of those. There is a cost associated with having more square footage on our campus, and I recognize that. But I believe uh, that uh, the long-term benefit, which is, which is continually proving itself, uh, tells me that we've made the right choice. Um, if you think about it, uh, uh, when I came in, in uh, January of 2001, um, we, were, uh, we were pretty small in terms of uh, uh, building contact our generation and, um, and also headcount. Um, we, um, we have grown at a level where uh, we really have um, advanced our institution, where we've really kind of grown ourselves another college in terms of overall volume and activity. When you think about those billing contact hours, um, you know, we were you know, below 100,000 easily blow 100,000, I, I think we're about 95,000 billing contact hours, and now we're, we're talking, uh, we're, we're closing in on 200,000. That's almost growing a brand new college from where we were nine years ago. Folks, that's significant. That tells me, by the use of data, that we are significant. Now, some of that is an economic, sure. You know, it's a, it's a shot in the dark about what percentage that is. Uh, I can try to get close for you, but but I also believe it's uh, the fact that we're more and more relevant. When I first came here, people talked about JUCO. They talked about uh, Jackson Community College in pretty much a negative light. I don't hear that anymore. I hear about, man, you've got exciting things going on at the college. Boy, my son just graduated. My daughter can't wait to go there. I talked with a young lady at a, at a store in town, and uh, she looked like she was about college age. And you should have heard her, young African-American woman. She was pumped about talking about coming to Jackson Community College in the fall. And she wanted to be a nurse, and she had all these ideas and just going on and on and on about that. And um, we are about service to this community and about helping change lives one person at a time. And uh, we thoughtfully and with the board's consent talked about creating this growth model. It does tax us all. Um, and to the degree that we're able to, I'm working the best that we can on maintaining full employment here at JCC uh, and not having to let people go, as so many of our uh, counterparts in this state and uh, in the community have had to do. Um, a lot of it's been by sleight of hand and taking a lot of effort, uh, but I'm, I'm mindful that we're all very, very busy. I, I can't walk down the hallway and not see bloodshot eyes, and I recognize that I know you're doing your level best and you don't feel like you're giving your best effort, but it's enough. It's, it's enough. It's, it's making an impact. It's, it's meeting people's needs for individuals who, excuse me, who are out of work right now and can come back to school or maybe even have a job with JCC. The, the thankfulness and the, 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 the palpable feeling that they express, I don't know if you, if you get that uh, where you are or not, but man, oh man, I think about what we're doing. You know, I'm glad to you know, work a little, a little extra harder so these individuals can get that education. But I also know that there's a breaking point. There's a point of diminishing returns, <coughs> both from an organizational standpoint <coughs> and from a human uh, physiological standpoint. So I am mindful that we have to have adequate staffing in key areas. And I think our new budget plan is going to talk about ways that maybe we can redistribute existing resources and uh, bring on some new existing resources with new staffing. And uh, the grants that I had mentioned previously, uh, I remain hopeful that uh, we will get some of uh, those will be successful there and 